All right, some players who I definitely did not think would be up for trade are starting to come out with teams like the Portland Trailblazers looking like they're actually going to be shopping a couple of guys around here and there who are definitely unexpected to say the least. But for those of you who haven't seen this by now, there is a report going around that does say that the Cleveland Cavaliers are, of course, interested in potentially trading for Josh Hart. Now, the official report does say that the Cavaliers have strong trade interest in Josh Hart per Mark Stein. The report also goes on to say that Trailblazers are taking calls on Josh Hart along with Yusuf Nurkic. Now, I will be one of the first people to say it that the Portland Trailblazers are in one of the weirdest, I think, stages in the whole entire NBA, if not the weirdest stage, because... I genuinely think they have one of the best five to six man rotations in the league, but one of the worst seven to 15 rotations in the league. I just think that if teams were to have six V sixes, right, Portland would be one of the best teams in the league. But because you obviously have to usually have a nine to 10 man rotation, the Trailblazers struggle in a lot of games because as soon as one guy gets injured, then it's just five good players and five kind of poo players. There is really not a whole lot of depth on this Portland Trailblazers team, and it has very much hurt them in this season. Other than like Damian Lillard, Simons, Jeremy Grant, Nurkic, and Hart, everyone else is kind of either developing or just an average at best role player. You look at it like, you know, Shane Sharp. He's only his first season. He's kind of struggled to make his way in Portland so far. Nazir Little is still developing, but hasn't been that great. And then you got average role players just like Drew Eubanks hanging around, and that's kind of being nice. There isn't exactly too many good role players on this team. Gary Payton's, of course, there, but he's been injured the whole entire season. And the way I thought they were going to handle this is I didn't think they were going to trade away any players. I genuinely thought they might have you know, traded, potentially, if they were going to go for a player, I heard there was a rumor of a trade where they could offer up Gary Payton and Nazir Little and three first round picks, one of them being protected and one of them being a pick swap, to try and get OG Ananobi. If they made that trade, they would have a really good seven-man rotation. Then they can go into the offseason, sign a good player on a mid-level exception. That's eight good players. Um, you might still have this year's draft pick uh, if you don't trade in the Toronto one. Draft the, uh, another good player. That's, you know, nine pretty much right there. Shane Sharp will take a better step. He'll be better next season. You're pretty much, you're going to make that like 10 or so. And then, of course, you can sign some better free agents here and there. It's really easy, I think, to fix this team. I don't think there's that many issues with it. They can definitely retool in the offseason and maybe be one of the best teams in the West next season. Issue is, they don't really seem to know if that's the direction they want to go in. They seem like they want to trade away these players and bring in picks and have these younger guys. But the issue is you've got Damian Lillard on your team and you just don't want to be wasting this guy's career. He's not going to be like this for much longer. He's probably got three to four years probably as this peak. And if the way you're going, this is a waste of season and if you trade away these role players and only bring in young players, you're not going to have good role players come in in the offseason, most likely, meaning you're probably going to waste next season as well. That's already two seasons gone of the dudes like four to five. That's just been thrown out the window right there. And this trend could definitely keep continuing. So before I get into the Cavaliers perspective on this Josh Hart move, I don't like it. I don't think it makes sense for Portland to do this. I mean, the thing is maybe they say to themselves, hold on, maybe we could get better role players. We get worse role players than what Josh Hart is, but we get a couple more. Maybe that's their thinking. Maybe they'd say, we'll give you Josh Hart. You give us Jetty Osman and Lamar Stevens, and we'll call that a deal, right? I don't think the Cavaliers would have to throw on any picks for that because I think both of those two players combined are probably as good as Josh Hart, if not better. And Lamar Stevens has the capability of being a really good player on a, on a you know, a good team. So I, I'm not sure about this move. Maybe that's the way they wanted to go. Not just that, these players are probably going to be on, especially when Jetty's contract, you know, maybe um, 
I think declines next year. We might have some cheaper contracts. I don't know. I don't know what the move is for Portland. Trading away Nurkic is weird as well, unless you're going after a dude like a DeAndre Ayton or a guy like Miles Turner, even though he just re-signed a dude similar to him. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what Portland are thinking of doing on this trade deadline. It's gonna be a really weird one. I just hope they do what I think they should do and trade for OG and then retool in the offseason and with their first round pick in the draft. You could definitely do that. I don't see why they couldn't, and I hope they maybe aim for that. It's just a really weird thing. I don't know what they're gonna do. With the Cavaliers, though, I don't even know if Josh Hart makes that much sense. I don't think it's the best thing ever. Even though he is better than Jetty Osman and Lamar Stevens, you'd have to trade up probably those two players to get the deal done. And I like those guys a lot. I do like Jetty, and I think you, you could say to yourself, well, Josh Hart does fit because he's a really nice defender and he can help rebound. Like, low key, something that people don't know about Josh Hart is this dude plays way bigger than what he actually is, especially this season. Like, Josh Hart, low key, uh, he's six foot five, right? But he's averaging eight rebounds per game. Like, that is insane. He's always averaged like seven and eight in the last couple of seasons as well. This dude is a rebounding machine who can switch on the power forwards as well. I guess if you're the Cavaliers, maybe you say, well, yeah, we could get Josh Hart in and he can help out, you know, because they're not getting Robin Lopez minutes. Maybe he could help out in the backup you know, big man category where he can be a dude that switches over to power forward and plays some small ball power forward, but gets the rebounds. I like that alternative. He's also a really good defender who could maybe help out with this Cavaliers team. But in saying that, if you were worried that much about rebounding or whatever, you could just go out and trade for a center. I don't know. It's a weird one. We know that Kevin Love is out of the rotation now and Robin Lopez is not getting any minutes at all. So it's pretty much just Mobley and Allen who are your two centers. Uh, Mobley starts the power forward, but he plays a lot of center minutes. So maybe they are looking for some big man depth for rebounding. Josh Hart's just not that big. I get that the rebounding comes with Josh Hart, but it's a bit of a weird one. I don't know. It's, it's definitely a weird one in my opinion. I think that if the Cavaliers were to go for a player like Josh Hart, I'd rather go for someone who has that defense, but instead of the rebounding, he's good at three-point shooting, right? I'm not sure who that might be. I don't know. The Cavaliers only have one first round pick to work with, and I don't even know if they're allowed to trade that yet because of the stipend rule, um, which I think is valid in the NBA. <laughs> I know this ain't 2K, so I'm not sure about that. But yeah, it's a really, really weird situation right now. The Cavaliers are finding themselves in on this trade period. I'm not sure who they're going to trade for. Maybe it's more than one player. Maybe we've been all lied to this whole time. I think if the Cavaliers were to try and trade for someone, I would rather them wait an off season and then maybe go after like a, a an elite small forward or something like that to try and get this done. I don't know. I know after the season, we'll have two first round picks and we've got a bunch of tradable assets. So it's not to say it couldn't be done. It's a, it's a very big possibility. But at the moment, we've only got one first round pick and I'm not even sure we're allowed to trade it yet due to that stipend rule type of thing. So we'll have to wait and see how we go about this. Portland are also a weird team because, again, where they sit right now in the NBA is definitely a mystery to a lot of people. But, of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. Do you guys think the Cleveland Cavaliers should trade for a guy like Josh Hart, or do you guys think they shouldn't? Of course, I would definitely like to know. Don't forget to subscribe to my IRL slash vlogging channel and my podcast. Links for them will be in the description down below. And check out my gaming channel as well if you haven't already. Links for them will be down below. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.